Okay guys, so in this video we are going to talk about configurable JavaScript. So let's get into it. Now, one of the, my favorite things to do when I work on a large JavaScript project is to have some, what I like to call, convenience tool that I can use in order to debug my own code. Now it's great to have a debugger and stuff of that nature, but sometimes I want to go take it one further and to be able to basically express something what I like to call debug mode. Now you should know as a general rule of thumb that you shouldn't add like debugging code to your production code. If you can avoid it that that you should, but I think that this is a fairly nice uh, like I'll show you an, an example of when I think that the, this is a nice exception and you, you kind of have to be pragmatic all, about these things but let's get into it. So what we're going to cover is just just a basic example of how you could debug some JavaScript and local storage and just talk very briefly about local storage because I don't use local storage for much as except for actually this single use case and I think it's a very good use case for this sort of work. So let's just very quickly look at the file. So we have a basic express app. All it does is that it renders an index a static file like this and it has a bunch of to-dos and the to-dos endpoint and here is our code. So it's just an HTML page and if we have a look at this page here we see that this it's just a simple list. So it has a foo and a bar and a bass and some value null. So let's for the sake of argument say that here I am debugging this. I want to figure out why is this value null? Hmm. Trivial example I know it might be a little bit contrived but just bear with me. So I'm trying to figure out something about my code. Now the obvious thing I could do is to put a break. I could go to my sources tab like this and I could start putting breakpoints and I could start stepping through the code like this and that's all fine and dandy but I wanted to show you a use case that I've found very useful in in larger applications especially in SBAs. So what I will do is that I will use local storage so I will simply have a single line a global called is debug mode or something of that nature and I will set a variable in my local storage or I would get some uh, a variable from my local storage and just check if that variable is set. Now this works for like you can just call it whatever you want it's an arbitrary thing but I like to call it underscore underscore debug because it's a safe thing to, to, to put in your local storage and now I have been able to check whether or not we are in debug mode so let's look at this program so we're getting some data we're parsing it into JSON and then we're simply checking if we are in debug mode then just log out what the, do, the to do's and then we map over the to do's we convert them into list items and we we log if we are in debug mode we simply log out that we are like what we got in the list array and then finally we create a string a ul string and then we log out that and finally we render this to the page. That's all this program does. Now this is a very simple example but in a large application this is actually very nice because what I can do now is that I can set debug in my local storage to true, refresh the page and I am now seeing these log outputs and you can initialize every single uh, tons of stuff. Things that I've been doing with this sort of concept in the past is that I create event listeners that I can use to do different things on the DOM and uh, just val validate different things, translations, all this stuff. I, and a classic example of where I find this to be extremely useful is if I have a client side a client side translation solution where I have different I support different languages and I want to be able to switch between languages and I can use local storage I can simply set whatever language I want to be loaded and then refresh the page and hey my page is now in that language and if I want to turn off my debug mode I simply set my local storage debug variable to false and now all my logging and all of my debug code is gone so I hope you found this useful. This is something that I've found to be a nice little trick to carry with you when you are maintaining a, well, a large-ish JavaScript project. And I hope you have a great day.